Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing the Romeo and Julieta for the Churchill. As per usual, this review was conducted using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can either use at home or refer to if you don't have time to watch the entirety of this video. If you look in the description below, you'll find the link to the final write-up of this review where you'll find a PDF version of this very cigar formula, which will give you a full overview of the cigar. Furthermore, these cigars were stored in the small Boveda acrylic humidor that you can see beside me, using a Boveda butler to monitor them. They're stored in this one rather than our usual large one because they're uh, instead stored at 65% using the 65% Boveda packs to ensure they're properly acclimated at the RH that is best adapted for Cuban cigars. With that all being said, let's get on with it. So, the Romeo and Julieta Petit Churchill was released in 2012. It's said to be a 20-minute Churchill, given that Churchill is uh, really a baby from Romeo and Julieta. They were the first to adopt the Churchill Vitola in 1946, which they named after probably their most famous client, Winston Churchill. It's made at the uh, H. Upman factory, most likely, although Romeo and Julieta's uh, repertoire is spread over several uh, factories throughout Cuba. Uh, it's the method for making it is the entubado style, which means that you get several leaves that you roll up and then twist round, which produces uh, a spread out airflow. This is a distinctive Cuban style of, um, of bunching cigars, whereas uh, New World countries such as Honduras, Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic will probably use booking at the very least, but most likely the accordion style, which is said to produce the best airflow. Being a Cuban cigar, it is of course a Cuban Puro. That means all the tobaccos in the cigar are grown in Cuba. And I think that just about covers it. Oh, and the Vitola. Well, with Cuban cigars, uh, each range refers to a specific Vitola. Normally the blends are more or less the same throughout all the Vitolas. Nevertheless, we're going to cover them separately in this case. It's a, a 4x50 size, it's quite small, but it does have a good ring gauge. We're looking at basically a Robusto that is missing an inch in length. Now let's jump into the look and feel. So first of all, I was quite impressed by the straightness of the roll. There are no soft spots on this, but it's not as hard as the H. Upman Magnum 54 that we uh, reviewed previously. The uh, spring is overall on the firm side, although you can, it is a little bit soft, let's say. In terms of the hue, we're looking at sort of a Mako or Makori uh, sort of wood color, and it does give off a nice oily sheen in the light. The aromas uh, on the nose, have I, as I've listed here on the uh, cigar formula, they're quite gourmand, very flavorsome. You're looking at some uh, cinnamon spice, but also some yeasty brioche, as well as some brandy butter, so creamy booziness that really adds substance to the overall um, overall bouquet. And in terms of the veins, well, it's well constructed. There aren't many visible veins, but occasionally you may find a couple on just one side, which I've noticed tends to be a tendency with uh, some Cuban cigars. Then when it comes to the pre-light, as you can see, I've already given this uh, a little uh, guillotine cut on over the triple cap. The draw is ideal, really good airflow. Uh, this is uh, people, Cuban cigars have a reputation, but it really depends on what you store them in. This is one of the reasons that a lot of people store them in 65% RH, is that the low humidity is meant to improve the airflow as well as give them, they, they can get moldy at a lower RH compared to New World cigars. Nevertheless, there, there is the argument that there are some construction and quality control issues. But in this case, excellent airflow nothing to say and I should probably stop going off tangent. In terms of the aromas, so you do still have some spiciness but in this case it's more like cardamom but you still also have a slight hint of cinnamon too. There's also a buttercream, it's not quite as boozy as the aromas on the foot so it's, but it's still got that buttery presence and there's dry clay, you know that terracotta, Cuban mustiness, you can taste it in the uh, dry draw of the cigar. The flavors are quite rich, very pleasant and quite inviting. So I think the next thing now is to light this up. So I'm just about finishing with the first third. And as you can see, very nice ash. However, there is some wonky waviness going on here. I'm going to leave it for now, see how it performs, and uh, we'll judge in the second third whether it needs touching up or not. 
In terms of flavor profile, this is very com complex with a rich gourmand presence. Let me say that again. Rich gourmand presence. We, um, it's very balanced. There's, there's, uh, in primary uh, flavors, we have uh, sort of almost an umami experience with some sweetness and some saltiness. It's quite savory, but you do have every now and then this, this twang of uh, sweet spice. Overall, uh, it can be summarized with some herbaceous, almost botanical notes. Uh, the most distinctive for me is charred bay leaf. Uh, we also have some nuttiness in there, some fresh walnut. And there is a, like I said, a twang of spiciness. And in this case, it's turmeric, which leaves an interesting coating on the lips. Overall, the first third is sadly quite fleeting, but very pleasant. So far, I don't think this is going to be a 20 minute smoke. I'm already, I'd say, a good 10 minutes in. So we'll see how this goes. Finishing the second third of the Romeo Julieta Petit Churchill. It's become a lot more savory. There's an increase in body, mild increase in body. It's not a, a huge difference, given that we've only smoked less than an inch. It's um, the mouthfeel has a greater weight on the palate. And uh, overall, we're, we're looking at far more savory flavors than in the first, uh, that sweetness, that umami I was talking about earlier, that's more or less faded. Now we're really looking at spices and some uh, salty, savory notes. Overall, it's dominated by coffee grounds, sort of espresso coffee grounds after pulling yourself a shot. And then the spiciness, I would have liken more to nutmeg than anything else. Though there is a slight yeastiness, a slight breadiness as well, which I did mention some brioche in the aromas on the foot, but brioche being quite buttery, being quite uh, sweet, this isn't at all the case here. Here it's heavier, it's, it's grainier, we're, we're looking at a, more like a rye bread or a Danish rupprod. This is um, overall quite an interesting change, but it stays consistent with the first third. Well. Don't have much longer to wait until we get to the nub. So I'll see you when I get there. Final third, here we are. The body does increase. We are still in a medium uh, smoke, uh, medium body smoke, but it's much heavier on the palate. Very meaty and I'll explain, let me explain. So in terms of aromas here, we still have the coffee, coffee grounds that has persisted all the way to the final third that really almost bitter savoriness, although it isn't really strong in bitterness. There's no, there's no pepper. There's also a distinctive earthy note, more like moist compost earth, not, not the dry terracotta Cuban uh, note that uh, we often talk about. And then in terms of meatiness, it's almost, it's very savory, almost like a gravy, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't say it's like a, a roast dinner, although that's a great pairing, which I will mention later. It's more like toasted rosemary. There, there's a, a certain herbal quality, almost botanical, but it, it does have this, this, this thick texture on the mouthfeel, but in the flavor as well. In terms of complexity, this cigar, it does offer you an interesting experience in its very fleeting length. You do get an interesting journey and it is a very pleasant indeed. The mouthfeel is smooth and it's weighty, but there is some roughness around the edges, which is actually quite pleasant with this blend. And then in terms of astringency and the palate stimulation, it does focus slightly towards, um, towards the lateral front, but there, there is certainly a presence near the back, especially once you progress to the second and final third. The, the life cycle, it does give you a good evolution throughout the experience. You, as I mentioned, you do get nice changes and interesting uh, development in flavor. And then for the finish, finish is quite long, far longer than the Magnum 52, for example, uh, Magnum 54 rather. Uh, this is something that if you have a palate cleanser such as an espresso, it would go very well marinating, marinating, marrying those final flavors. And then the residual scent in the room, although this is a little bit bolder than say the Magnum 54, I don't know why I keep, it's a similar Vitola, so that's why I keep comparing them. This is something that's gonna have much more presence in the room after you've smoked it. Uh, the, the smoke may last longer, it may linger, but it is not offensive, it's quite, it's quite fragrant. Then when it comes to the burn, so I have had some uh, issues that have continued all the way through, but for me, nothing that really merits a touch-up. This is absolutely fine. The ash backbone is great. You have these nice 
bits of solid ash. And then in terms of the burn angle, I, I just mentioned that. And then the draw, the draw is uh, consistent all the way through the smoke. You do get great airflow when enjoying this. And then finally, the temperature of the smoke, it can warm up if you smoke it too quickly. Being a short cigar, it is quite deceptive. You feel you have to rush, but I would say instead, take your time. It's not really a 20 minute smoke as it was marketed. It's more like half an hour, 35 minutes, maybe even 40 if you really pace yourself. And then uh, the overall experience. So you have the classic Romeo Julieta band uh, that is as with any Romeo Julieta cigar, and it's kind of what you want. It's, it's, an, it's a nice ornate band. And then the gold Petit Churchill uh, secondary band, much like you get on the wide Churchill, is uh, very stylish and uh, quite uh, regal in appearance. And then when it comes to the box, in this case, this is a uh, three cigar box with the tubos. It has a very ornate design with the classic uh, um, Romeo e Julieta uh, de, uh, accoutrements with the uh, gold uh, coins and Romeo and Juliet uh, in the balcony scene from William Shakespeare's play. We also have the tubo here which has a very lavish design as well. So these will be great to you know, carry on your person, protect the cigar, but if you're gonna leave it too long before you actually smoke the cigar, maybe you should remove them from the tubos and put them in a cigar case, or you could put them in a, uh, a travel humidor instead. Uh, the design has the band, the red and white style with the uh, brand written on the side. It also has a that's quite difficult to open. You have a cedar uh, spill in here as well, which will give it a little bit of extra flavor, supposedly, or help in the um, storage process if you'd like to keep them in the tubos in your humidor. Uh, I'm gonna keep that for lighting a cigar in the future. The value, it can be a little bit on the pricey side given the size of the cigar. I saw prices that varied between uh, 12 and 16 US dollars. There is also the question of if you're in the US, how you acquire them. There are websites such as iHavana's, Monte Fortuna, and Bellhop. I believe iHavana's was the only one that seemed to stock them out of three. There is the legally gray area whether you can or cannot order them. I know that people do, uh, but I personally can't condone it because you know there is the legal issue. It may get seized or, or worse. And then finally, in terms of the occasion, this is a very versatile cigar. It's a great one to enjoy as a digestif. Uh, after a meal uh, in the early evening or mid-evening or even the late afternoon after lunch if you fancy something a little bit bolder. It's also good as an aperitif. It's also given its size something if you have a quick break or if you're having like a quick business meeting and you want to enjoy it with a client or a colleague, it is a solid option. And it's something that you can take to formal occasions or events without it uh, either being taking too long, too much of your time, or Without it, it, it has a nice uh, formal and, uh, and stylish appearance that would suit most of these occasions well. Then when it comes to pairings, and that's the last section, it's not scored, it's just a, a thought exercise that we have at the bottom right hand side here. So this is a cigar that uh, would go well with uh, things like walnuts and pretzels. Uh, you can use the pretzels to bring out that yeastiness, and the walnuts will bring out that nuttiness, especially in the first third. So it is something that you could certainly have maybe as an aperitif rather than a digestif as I suggested earlier before having a large meal or indeed afterwards if you just want to have a couple of nibbles. Alternatively, you could have it, I wouldn't say alongside, but maybe following uh, a large uh, hearty meal. So it'd be a good digestif in that sense, especially after something like a roast dinner, uh, roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, gravy, all the trimmings, especially given the final third being quite meaty, it might bring out some of those uh, lingering flavors that are on your palate and so you can continue to enjoy it. Then when it comes to beverages, uh, being a digestif, you can certainly go for a uh, Highland single malt, but I would consider something that my stepdaughter gave me is this Swedish single malt whiskey. It's actually really nice. It's called Macmira. It's from uh, Brooks Whiskey. I don't know anything about it. I've, I mean, I've, I've read the packaging. I should do a little bit more research, but this has a very rich, opulent flavor, which is consistent with a Highland single malt. Alternatively, you could go for a rum, and in this case, I would suggest an English-style uh, rum, preferably from perhaps Jamaica, like the Appleton 21. That would be a great option. It would have that sort of potency that would go well with the character of the cigar. Alternatively, of course, if it's after a meal, 
an espresso would be a fine choice. And normally espresso is a little bit too short to enjoy with a cigar, but given the this one being quite um, short and not quite as long, you're gonna be able to enjoy it quite happily with a short a cigar that's shorter, maybe a double espresso. But if you prefer it to be a little longer, why not a uh, long black or even an Americano? Anyway, that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions about the Romeo Julieta uh, Petit Churchill, if you'd like to share your own experiences, and if you have any requests for any future videos. Until our next video, why don't you head to bespoking.com and see all the other lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'm sure that there'll be something that you'll love.